Robert! Robert! What's the matter with you? Is it I, Robert? It's happened. Where is he now? In the tower room. We do now, William. Get a doctor first, and then. We can't bring a doctor here. You know that. We'll have to chance it. Get him downstairs to one of the bedrooms while I go to the village. What about Mr. Gerald? I'll get in touch with him and tell him that he must come here to Craven immediately. I suppose that was the beginning. It occurred in Scotland, in a remote and distant castle in the Highlands. And yet it started the fantastic chain of events which led to my experience in the maze. It was just a year ago. My niece Kitty and I were with a group of friends in a delightful little cafe in Cannes on the French Riviera. It was an engagement party. Did you see the way that girl was making eyes at my fiancé? Honestly, it makes me wonder what you'd be doing if I weren't here. <laughs> I should probably be out looking for you, just as I've been doing most of my life. You see why I'm marrying him, Aunt Edith? He always says the right thing. <laughs> well, I've always mistrusted glib men before. I'll have to make an exception in your case, Jerry. Thank you, madam. Well, it seems to me that as the prospective best man, I'm entitled to at least one dance with the bride-to-be. That's before Jerry takes her over, for better or worse. May I, Kitty? Of course, Richard. Oh, stop smiling, Gerald. You're supposed to be jealous. <laughs> you know, Aunt Edith, this being in love is an extraordinary thing. It makes me realize all the years I wasted without being in love. Gerald, do you think your uncle, Sir Samuel, will come to the wedding? Sir Samuel? Oh, no, I should think not. He's kept himself locked up in that miserable Craven Castle ever since I can remember. Oh, I have heard it's a beautiful place. Uh, maybe it is from a distance. Do you know that in all these years, not a single improvement has ever been made at Craven? No electricity, no telephone, no central heating system, nothing. How long since you've been there? Hmm, 15 years. Hmm. When I was there, they had the most fantastic set of rules. My uncle used to lock me in my room every night. Then there was a maze, an overgrown maze, and a gate with a padlock on it. Just one more place that I was forbidden to visit. A maze? What on earth for? Who knows? Every Scottish castle had a maze at one time or another. Most of them have been removed, but not the one at Craven. Ah, very handsome couple. Thank you, Kitty. 
Well, fare thee well, sweet people. I am going to the bar, where I shall drown myself in a sea of champagne. Life for me is finished. Well, for me, I still have two weeks as a bachelor, and I'd like to enjoy them. How about dancing? Not telling what that might lead to. Well, suppose we find out. Excuse us, Aunt Edith. I'll consider it. Gerald's words about Craven Castle and the McTeam family worried me. Not only what he said, but something he neglected to say. That none of the baronets lived more than a few years after inheriting the title. And Gerald was the next in line. The next day, which was bright with summer sunshine, did much to dispel my worries of the night before. Oh. oh, the water is wonderful, Aunt Edith. You ought to try it. Oh. This just came for you, Gerald. Express letter. Express letter? Who could be that anxious to get in touch with me? Your Uncle Samuel, I imagine. It's from Craven Castle. Craven Castle? I haven't had a letter from there in 15 years. What is it? For William, my uncle's butler. He says it's urgent that I come to Craven as soon as possible. Oh, Gerald, I'm sorry. When must you leave? Well, I'm not leaving anywhere until you and I are married. Oh, well, darling, that won't be for two weeks. And if it's urgent, you'd better go right away. Maybe your uncle's ill. But we scarcely know each other. We don't mean anything to one another. Oh, I suppose you're right. I'm sorry, darling. I'll get back just as soon as I possibly can. After all, I'm having a wedding in a couple of weeks, and I wouldn't like to miss it. Glad to hear it. Well, don't look so glum, Aunt Edith. You know, in a way, it'll be a good thing to get rid of Gerald for a few days, because we can go shopping for my trousseau and not have him watching all the French models. Oh, and that's particularly what I was looking forward to. I'll go up and change right now. I'll catch the noon plane for London. The sooner I get up there, the sooner I get back. I'll see you in a few minutes, darling. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd forgotten that one day I'd be a baronet's wife. Lady Gerald McTeen. Sounds impressive, doesn't it? Yes, Kitty. It sounds very nice. Good afternoon. Bonjour, mademoiselle, madame. Has the late mail come in yet? Oui, mademoiselle. I'm sorry, there is no mail for you today. Thank you. We should have heard from Gerald by now, Aunt Edith. It's been a week. He's probably been very busy. I'm sure you'll hear from him soon. I'm worried about him. Something's wrong, I'm sure of it. I'm going to telephone him. Kitty, there are no telephones at Craven Castle. Gerald told me so. No telephones, but there must be. No. He said the castle was just as it was hundreds of years ago. No electricity, no telephones, no modern improvements at all. I'll go to the telegraph office and cable him then. He's probably on his way back here now. Well, he certainly would have let me know if he was. I'm going to cable him. And Edith, look at this. Scottish baronet passes. 
Sir Samuel McTeen, Bart, died at Craven Castle, Scotland, of a heart ailment this past weekend. He was 45 years of age. Sir Gerald McTeen, his nephew and successor as baronet, has announced that the burial services will be private. Poor Gerald. This must be why we haven't heard from him. I'm sure it is. He's had to make arrangements for Sir Samuel's funeral and, and probably lots of other things, too. I'm sure we'll hear from him now. Of course we will, dear. Hello? Yes, this is she. Oh. Yes, I understand. Thanks for calling, anyway. That was the telegraph company. They sent through a tracer on all my cables to Gerald, and every one of them was received at Craven Castle. And none of them was answered? No. Kitty, I think Gerald silences his answer. Oh, he's probably busy with the funeral. How long does it take to scribble an answer to a kid? Oh, my dear, I'm afraid it's obvious now that Gerald does not intend to see you again. If that were true, he would have said so. He would have written some sort of explanation. Forget him, Kitty. I can't, I won't. It's all very well to be brave and hopeful, my dear, but how long are you going to wait? As long as it takes. I love Gerald, and, and I know him. Something's happened. Some sort of trouble. Whatever it is, he'll, he'll work it out, and, and then we'll hear from him. All right, dear. We'll wait. There's probably a very simple explanation for it all. I tried to agree with her, but I wasn't sincere about it. I had the awful feeling we would probably never hear from Gerald again. I was wrong. Six weeks later, a letter came from Gerald addressed not to Kitty, but to me. From Gerald? I think so. It's from Craven Castle. Dear Aunt Edith, I thought at first that I would be able to arrange things. Heaven knows I've tried. But now I realize I cannot. It's impossible. Please tell Kitty I release her from the engagement that I will always be faithful to her. Tell her that I can never marry her unless something happens that I haven't even the right to hope for. Something's been crossed out in pencil. A death? Tell her that I can never marry her something happens that I haven't even the right to hope for, for it would be a death. Death, but whose? His uncle died weeks ago. Kitty, I don't know what it means, and I don't want to know. Well, I do. Gerald would never wish for anyone's death. You know that. Perhaps not, but the fact is that well, Gerald... something's happened to him. This letter, it's... it's so strange. Why, just a few weeks ago... It has it's... something to do with that castle. Of course it has. If you think I'm going to let a crumbling old castle ruin Gerald's life and mine, too, you're very much mistaken. What are you going to do, Kitty? I'm going there to find out for myself. I don't care if it's full of skeletons and ghosts. I... No. Yes, I am. I'd like you to come, too, Aunt Edith. Whether you do or not, I'm going to pack right now. Are you sure this is the right place? Aye. Let's Craven Castle.
Well, I like that. At least he could have helped us with our bags. He seemed almost frightened of something. Well, what's there to be frightened of? I can think of several things right now. Oh, don't be silly, Aunt Edith. Come on. waiting until tomorrow. I feel as if I'd stepped into another world. It's sinister, all right. Perhaps there's no one here. At least there ought to be a few ghosts. friends of Sir Gerald McTeen. Sir Gerald is indisposed. And so are we. We're indisposed to standing in this miserable fog. Come on, Aunt Edith. Will you please inform Sir Gerald that he has guests? Tell him his fiancée and her aunt are here to see him. I beg pardon? You heard me. His fiancée, Miss Catherine Murray. Yes, miss. I'll tell Sir Gerald. Kitty, we should never have come here. And the sooner we leave, the better. Oh, poor Aunt Edith. You must be chilled to the bone. If Gerald doesn't come soon and take us to our rooms to get warmer... I should have come a long time ago. What's the matter? Tell me. Didn't you get my letter? Yes, Gerald, I received it. Well, then there's no excuse for your being here. I'll expect you to leave at once. We're staying, Gerald. We've been traveling for hours and we're cold and hungry. William. See the ladies to one of the bedrooms. Follow me, if you please, ladies. Robert will bring your bags. Thank you, Joe. I expect you to leave in the morning. There's another bedroom through that connecting door. Thank you. Um, would you mind bringing us some hot tea and some more wood for the fire, please? Yes, miss. Did you ever see such a change in a person, Aunt Edith? Gerald looks... He looks 20 years older. And he tried to send us away. I can't understand it. Something terrible must have happened to him. His eyes. He looked at me as if he almost hated me. Yes? Well, William, what is it? The young lady, sir, Miss Murray. I believe she said she was your fiance. She was. I broke the engagement. And why has she come here? I 
don't know. They'll be gone in the morning. Yes, sir. 10.30 already. Yes, sir. In which room did you put the ladies? They are in the suite with a connecting door in the middle of the corridor. And I took the precaution of ordering Robert to lock both their doors, sir. Yes, William. Thank you. Yes, sir. More tea? Yes, thanks. I can't seem to get warm. Mm. I know what you mean. Oh, what a miserable place this is. It is indeed. Now, why do you suppose anybody would want to seal up windows? I haven't the faintest idea. And did you notice the rubber coverings on all the hallways? And those stairs? They're the strangest looking stairs I've ever seen. Each step is like a platform. Everything about this place is strange. I can't tell you how delighted I should be to leave it. We can't leave, Aunt Edith. Not until I've at least tried to help Gerald. He's sick. He must be to look the way he does. Kitty, whatever has happened to Gerald, there's something evil. I can feel it in this place. And we have to get out of here before it happens to us. I'm as frightened of this place as you are, Aunt Edith, but I have to try. I don't know whether Gerald's illness is, is mental or physical, but I want to find out. I have to find out. Well, I don't know how much help I can be. Open this door. Open this door at once. Don't. That's one of the castle rules. Rules? What are you talking about? Well, I haven't told you before, but Gerald mentioned these rules to me. His uncle used to lock the doors every night. There's a maze outside that's padlocked. And the tower stairs, the ones at the end of the hall, are forbidden too. Oh, it all sounds ridiculous to me. It did to Gerald too, once. And now he's doing exactly the same things his uncle did. Sir Gerald, Mrs. Cameron, the cleaning woman who had the attack last week. Yes, what about it? She passed away. We just heard from the village. Make all the arrangements for her burial. Yes, sir. Uh, what was the official cause of death? The certificate will say heart failure, sir. Hereafter, you and Robert will have to handle the cleaning yourselves. Sir Gerald, this was not our fault. The woman was told not to go into the maze. I know that. If you must have help, don't engage any more women. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.
Aunt Edith. Kitty. What's the matter? There's something going on in the maze. I saw it. In the maze? What are you talking about? Well, there's a hidden passage leading from my room to, to some sort of a lookout tower. Look, get your robe on and I'll show you. No, thank you. I'm not that interested. I could see the maze and, and there was somebody in it. In the middle of the night? Well, what on earth were they doing? I don't know. I, I suppose it's all connected somehow. Our door's being locked and, and everything. Kitty, whatever is going on, this place must be something horrible. What made this change in Gerald? And the sooner we leave, the better off we'll be. I'm beginning to think you're right. Dressed already. Well, it would only take me a few. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. This miserable fog. I seem to have got a little cold. I didn't get back to sleep last night. I've been thinking. We can't leave this morning. And why not? I'd like to know. Well, I don't feel any differently about Gerald now than I did before, and I'd like to help him if I can. I haven't even tried yet. He won't let you, Kitty. You know that. He told us we had to leave. <laughs> Excuse me. I could only figure something out. That's it. You have a bad cold. What on earth are you talking about? It's only a simple head cold. I feel... <coughs> well, you'll have to stay in bed for a few days and, and I'll tell Gerald that you absolutely cannot leave. I don't think it will work, Kitty. I'll make it work. I'll get you some breakfast. This way, miss. Oh, oh, very well. Good morning, miss. Good morning, Gerald. It's a wonderful day, isn't it? Especially after that fog last night. Where's Mrs. Murray? She has a bad cold. I, I made her stay in bed. If you don't mind, I think I'll go into the kitchen and fix her something on a tray. In bed, you say? Oh, it's not serious. In two or three days... That's impossible. She... I want you and your aunt to leave here this morning. I'm sorry my presence disturbs you, Gerald. There's not much choice now. Aunt Edith simply must not get up until she's completely recovered. You had no right to come here. This castle is no place for you. Yes, it is, Gerald. Don't you understand? My place is with you, wherever it is. What's happened to us? What's happened to all the dreams we made together? Why are you acting this way? I'm not acting anyway. I merely want you and your aunt to leave. Gerald, I want to help you. My feelings haven't changed, and I don't think yours have either. I said in my letter that I can't marry you. And I can't. If your bags are packed, miss, I'll bring them down now. We're not leaving. William, will you 
prepare a tray for my aunt. I'll take it up to her room. Very well, miss. Oh, William. I'd like to ask you something. What's happened to Sir Gerald? I beg pardon, miss. Can't you see he's ill? If you have any loyalty at all, you get a doctor. There is no necessity for a doctor, miss. We're all perfectly capable of taking care of Sir Gerald. You mean you won't send for a doctor? Is that it? I'll prepare the tray, miss. Something you want, Miss? Uh, yes, sir. Um, will you tell William that I'll take my breakfast with my aunt in, in her room? Yes, Miss. Thank you. And when I told him to get a doctor, he, he changed the subject quickly. Aunt Edith, I must do something. But what can you do, Kitty? If Gerald won't tell you what's troubling him, he certainly wouldn't tell a doctor. If we could get him to see a doctor at all. You've given me an idea. We'll make him see a doctor whether he wants to or not. Now, what are you talking about? Bert. Bert Dilling. We'll invite him and Margaret here and... That's too obvious, Kitty. Gerald knows very well Bert's a doctor. Besides, he wouldn't allow you to invite anyone here. You know that. Gerald doesn't have to know until it's too late to do anything about it. I know. I'll tell Bert to bring Richard and Peggy Lord along, too. That way won't look too obvious. You mean, just have them drop in? Well, it's not entirely impossible. I mean, they could have been motoring through Scotland for the weekend and... Kitty, I hope you know what you're doing. I do, believe me. Anyway, he can't be alone in this castle too long. I mean, these people are his friends. And a gathering like this might help him to forget whatever it is that's troubling him. For a while, anyway. I hope it works. It has to. Yes, who is it? I've come for the breakfast tray, madam. Very well, come in. He's writing a letter. Very well. But I'll take care of it, Robert. Aunt Edith. How do you think this sounds? Dear Bert, I haven't time to explain everything, but it's most urgent that you come here to Craven Castle. Gerald is sick, and his servants will not call a physician for him. And I'm sure he would refuse to see one himself. Please come, Bert, and bring Margaret with you. I think Richard Rover and Peggy Lord should come also, so it will look like a social visit instead of a professional one. There is no time to lose, Bert. Please get here as soon as you can. Kitty. I'm sure that will bring him, Kitty, but how are you going to get it posted? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Don't worry. I'll get it posted. Good afternoon, miss. Oh, good afternoon, William. I'll post your letter for you, miss. Oh, no thank you, William. I'll post it myself.
It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Hey, miss, are you lost? Lost? Oh, no. I'm a guest of Sir Gerald's. I'm staying at the castle. A guest? A craven? Yes, Sir Gerald and I are engaged to be married. But, but what's the matter? I wish you the best, miss. I'll pray for you. Thank you. I'd best be on with my work, miss. I'll be saying good morning. Oh, I have a letter I'd like to post. Would you tell me where I should wait for the post? I'll be meeting him, miss. I'll give him your letter. Gerald! Oh, Gerald, you're, you're hurting my arms. Stay out of here for the rest of your visit. Kitty, what's the matter? It's Gerald. I started to go into the maze, and he was just awful to me. Here. Thanks. All right? Oh. No. What happened? Well, he told me to get out of the maze and stay out, and he was absolutely furious. He gripped my arm so tightly that it hurt. It's time I had a talk with Gerald. No, Aunt Edith, please don't. It wouldn't do any good. If he thinks he can treat you No, like... Aunt Edith. Gerald's sick. He's not responsible for his actions. I'm sure he feels worse about this now than I do. He's going to feel a great deal worse after I get through with him. William. Where is Sir Gerald? Sir Gerald is occupied. Please tell him I wish to speak to him immediately. I'm sorry, Mrs. Murray. Sir Gerald left orders not to be disturbed. I don't care what orders he left. I must see him now. I'm afraid that's impossible. Perhaps tomorrow morning. Please excuse me.
you all right, Aunt Edith? What was it? You fainted. Gerald, I went to your room and I saw something. Something horrible. It was the most horrible thing I've ever seen. What did you see, Aunt Edith? What was it? It was something alive. I saw it move. It was your imagination. Aunt Edith does not imagine that sort of thing, Gerald. There's nothing upstairs except my quarters, in which I insist on privacy. Obviously, the only way I can have that is to lock my uninvited guests in their rooms. Hereafter, make sure that the guests are in the rooms before you lock the doors. Yes, sir. Kitty, I did see something. I know I did. Do you feel better now? Of course. Well, go to sleep. You're tired and overwrought. You don't believe me? Yes, I do, but we'll talk about it tomorrow. Good night. Are you awake, Aunt Edith? Of course I'm awake. How are you feeling? Exhausted. But at least my cold is better. It must have been frightened out of me. Kitty, there's no longer any excuse for our staying. Now that my cold is practically gone. Shh. There's someone outside. Who is it? Gerald. Good morning, Gerald. Morning. Is your cold better? As a matter of fact, it... Well, it isn't, actually. Poor Aunt Edith didn't sleep a wink last night. Uh, isn't that so? Certainly it's so, but... Kitty, I think we'd better stop this pretext. I really want you to leave. Very well, Gerald. We'll leave tomorrow. What can you possibly hope to accomplish by staying another night in this place? I must get Bert Dilling here to see Gerald. Well, after what happened last night, I can't stay any longer. The thing you saw, or thought you saw, can you describe it? No. It was... I don't know what it was. It was so dark, I didn't really get a good look at it. Could it have been a man? Well, I... I don't know. I, I suppose it could have been a man. Oh, that's what it must have been, I'm sure. And what with the room being so dark and, and you not expecting to be surprised like that, well, you were frightened and you fainted. Perhaps you're right. I'm sure I am. I'll get you some breakfast. Kitty, hmm? that letter, the one you gave to the gardener, do you suppose he posted it? If he did, Bert and the others should be here today. But if he didn't, we'll have to leave tomorrow. Isn't it? Looks like it's going to get ready to fall apart any minute. Don't be silly, Richard. That's what's known as old world charm. Very <laughs> <It's pretty> old. <laughs> it looks like it hasn't been touched for centuries. You, you sure this is the right place? Well, there's only one way to find out. Kitty, how Hello. are you? Oh, I'm so glad you all could come. 
Oh, Bert. Bert, I'm so happy to see you. Hello, my dear. Now, what's all this all about? Well, as I started to tell you in my letter, Gerald's a... Jerry, oh boy, gosh, it's good to see you. Hello, Jerry. You, you know, we were out driving in the country and we suddenly found ourselves in the Highlands, so well, we thought we'd drop in. Gosh, a marvellous place you've got here. So this is McTeam Manor. Well, my boy, what does it feel like to be a baronet? You know, it looks as if you might have some good shooting up here. We brought our guns, you know. It's a wonderful place, Gerald. I'm and glad we came. Do you know, I've got the most wonderful new stories to tell you. Well, they'll sound much better over a couple of drinks. Gerald, our friends have been driving all day. I... I think they'd like to rest a little before supper. William. Yes, sir? Show my guests to their rooms. Yes, sir. Follow me, please. Kitty. I'd like to talk to you. Of course, Gerald. I'll see you later. You think I'm a complete fool? Do you expect me to believe that those people arrived here just by accident? Gerald, please. I know you sent for them. Why? By what right? Gerald, please listen to me for just a moment. You won't tell me what's troubling you, but whatever it is, it can't be so terrible that you must shut yourself off from the world entirely. These people are your friends. They like you and they'll be good for you. Gerald, I came here because I love you. I want to help you. Please let me. The only way you can help me is by leaving you. Your illness can be helped. I'm sure it can. I'm not ill, Kitty. I only wish it was something that simple. I beg your pardon. Thank you. What do you think, Bert? Well, I, I don't know what to think, Kitty. He looks very bad, but not exactly ill, as far as I can tell. You mean, you don't think it's physical? That might mean that he's... Insane? I don't know. It's obvious he won't submit to an examination. I've just got to observe him as best I can. Well, we'll keep him distracted if it's possible to do it. Yes, I think that's the thing to do. Uh, don't watch him too obviously, if you can help it. And keep being as cheerful as you can. I think that's a good idea. Well, I know it's awful for you, Kitty, but Bert will do everything he can. Well, of course I will. We all will. You're good friends. Thank you. Are you sure you feel well enough to come down to dinner? Yes, yes, I feel fine. I told you it was a good idea to bring dinner dresses, didn't I? I knew we'd find use for them. Yes, but I'm not at all sure yours is the right kind to wear in a dismal place like this. Certainly it is. I have no idea how I look. I can only see a few square inches of myself at a time. None of your inches is square. And they all look very nice. Now stop fishing and let's go down to dinner. I'm hungry. Oh, you must be starving. You've had nothing but liquids for days. Maybe we'll have a very nice time. Maybe. Here we are, my love. Where have you been, dear boy? Aha, you missed me, eh? Of course. Those martinis look a little pale. You look a little pale, dear, if you were only 90 proof. 
No good, eh? I'll do better next time. Kitty? Oh, no, thank you, Richard. No? No. no. You'd like these, Dr. Bird. Huh? I mixed them to your prescription. 27 to 1. <gasps> oh, no. Well, you don't have to drink it, my dear. Perhaps we can find you a glass of port. You'll do nothing of the kind. <laughs> Come on, Richard, fill it up. Might as well be good and sick as the way I am. Well, I've never heard of doctor's wives being sick. Oh, Kitty, never heard of them being anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, why don't you tell that musician story to Gerald? It might cheer him up. Mm, good idea. I heard a new one of those musician stories, Jerry. Well, it seems the chap was playing the piano very loudly and very late at night. Well, the manager of the flat comes and bangs on the door and says, hey, do you know there's an old lady sick upstairs? So the musician says, no, but if you hum the first four bars, I'll try and follow you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gerald, that's much better. Is it nice to see all our friends again? Talking of musicians, I remember the time about six months ago when I was going... To... Where's he going, Kitty? I... I don't know. Well, it might help if we found out. Something's upset him, and the sooner we can find out what it is, the better... Well, the door is locked. Bert, are you sure? Well, that settles it, as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to have to do something about this, and soon. Well, what can you do? Let me have your car keys, Richard, will you? Certainly, I'll buy But why? Well, as soon as possible, I'm driving down to the village. I'll make out the necessary papers and have Gerald taken into custody. But Gerald isn't insane. I'm not taking any chances, Kitty. From what I've seen of him so far, he may be dangerous. Very much so. And the sooner I get him under observation, the sooner he can be helped. If at all. Oh, Bert, it can't be as bad as all that. Oh, of course not. Kitty, you asked me to come here and take a look at Gerald. Well, I've looked. And I'm afraid it might be even more serious than you made it out to be. Don't cross him, any of you. Do you understand? You really think it's that serious? Yes, I do. Don't do or say anything to upset him. He might eat. Uh, I, I suppose I told you the story about the flame dancers in Singapore. Didn't I? No, but I, I, I'd love to hear it. Dinner is served. Well, at least we'll see how a baronet eats. I hope baronets don't say as much as I have to watch my figure. Aunt Edith, I want you to steal the key out of the big door for me. What on earth for? Well, I think all the locks are the same, and I want to get out of my room tonight. And uh, there I was, you see, with that maddened elephant in front of me and a whole tribe of fuzzy wuzzies behind me. Now, and why it... do you suppose they call those people fuzzy wuzzies? Well, that's just what they call the men, Ducky. They call the girls. Oh, just a moment, young man. We'll have none of your miserable jokes right after lovely dinner. <laughs> miserable jokes? I, I was just going to quote Kipling like Bert always does. Now, in India's sunny clime, where I used to spend my time, <laughs> a servant of Her Majesty, the Queen. Excuse me. There are certain rules in this castle, and I'm afraid they must be observed. You'll all be expected to be in your rooms at 11 o'clock, and it's almost that now. But, Jerry, really, I mean... It's all right, Jerry. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm very tired. As you can see, I'm not equipped for entertaining here. It's been very nice to see you all, but I must expect you to be gone in the morning. Oh, and please don't be alarmed if your doors are locked during the night from the outside. What are you going to do, Bert? Wait till tomorrow. There's nothing else I can do. Did you get the key? Why don't you stop prowling about and come to bed? Yes, in a moment, I. What are you going to 
to do with it? Oh, nothing, I hope. But if it becomes necessary, I'll shoot the lock off that door. But you really think you're as dangerous? Yes, I'm afraid it's possible. I looked up the McTeam family history when I got Kitty's letter. There seems to be a pretty strong indication of some sort of congenital illness. All the baronets died while they were still young men. Sir Samuel, Gerald's uncle, was only 45. His uncle died before he was 30. It's been the same for generations. You saw how Gerald looked tonight. Oh, he's aged terribly. I found out something else, too. The last woman to marry a McTeam baronet died a few days after she moved here under very strange and mysterious circumstances. The records listed her death, but not the cause. And there hasn't been a wife at Craven since. Well, how long ago was that? Two hundred years. Almost exactly. Did you take the key from the great hall door? No. It's missing. Are you sure? Yes, I noticed it after the guests had retired to their bedrooms. Do you think one of them? I don't know. But we'll have to search every bedroom until we find it. Half past 11. We won't have time now. No, but first thing in the morning. What about Sir Gerald? Should he be told? No. No. I hope it was not one of the ladies who took the key. You know what happened to the cleaning woman? I... Kitty, I wish you wouldn't go through with this. I'm sure there's something in that tall room. I must, Aunt Edith. Now more than ever. Bert thinks Gerald's insane. I don't. And this is the first chance I've had to try and find out what's been troubling him. There's no furniture in here at all. And the window is not blocked off as ours are. I wonder where that door leads to. It's a piece of seaweed. I'm sure of it. And a bowl of tomatoes. Gerald had this book downstairs today.
Yes, sir, they're all locked. going to do, Kitty? Follow them. Look at this. I saw a mark just like this one inside the maze here. What is it? I don't know. But I'm sure of one thing, Aunt Edith. Whatever the mystery is, it's a person. How do you know that? Well, didn't you hear Gerald say, yes, sir? They're all locked. He was talking to someone we haven't seen yet. Kitty, are you thinking what I am? Teratology. The study of monstrosities. Poor Gerald. The secret of Craven It's is so a... horrible that he won't marry you. Kitty, you can't. Surely he knows me better than that. I must see him now. So I can show him it doesn't matter. Wrong turn. We'll probably make a lot of those before we get to the center. I hope you're counting them so that we can find our way out again. Just a little. Stay where you are and keep whispering. I'll come to you. This way. This way. 
did it. Aunt Edith. The light's gone out. Can you hear me? You sound farther away. Kitty. Go after him. I'll take care of Mrs. Murray. I don't know, but that was screaming if ever I've heard it. I'm going to find out about it. frightened. I tried to tell him that he was safe, but he wouldn't listen, Sir Gerald. When he tried to climb out of the window, he was too strong for us. I know, William. It wasn't your fault. Carry him inside. All right, Kitty. I'm ready whenever you are. It will be all right, dear. Try not to feel too bad. Why couldn't I have minded my own business? Why did I have to come here? Yes, come in. I beg your pardon. If you would be so kind, the master would like to see you in the dining room. All the guests are waiting there. The master? You mean Sir Gerald? Yes, miss. He's the master now. Morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. 
Well, now we're all accounted for. At least we didn't lose anybody in the excitement last night. Oh, darling. A little early, isn't it? You're mistaken, my dear. It's almost too late. Will anyone join me? Now that you mention it, it uh, is getting rather late, isn't it? Good morning, my friends. Good morning, Gerald. Good morning, Gerald. Kitty. Kitty, I have so much to explain to you. Yes, Gerald. I... Forgive me, I know I owe all of you an explanation. Yes, I think you do, Gerald. And you shall have it. I know that you all think that I and my predecessors for the past 200 years have been the real lords of Craven. That's not true. The last baronet of Craven, Sir Roger Philip McTeam, was born on the 5th of April in the year 1750. And he died on the 10th of May, 1953. Yesterday. Last night. We buried him before dawn in a corner of the grounds in accordance with his wishes. But, Gerald, a man doesn't live 200 years. No, Kitty, a man doesn't. But certain types of amphibians do. I'll try to explain it as best I can. All I know is that the human embryo goes through all the stages of evolution, from the invertebrate to the mammal. At one point, the embryo is an amphibian. Sir Roger never developed beyond that stage physically. But he continued to grow and develop mentally. For over 200 years, he suffered the torture of knowing he was a monster and feeling he was a man. And he administered the estate all those years? He did. The nephews, grandnephews, great grandnephews succeeded one another here at the castle. We bore the title of baronet. Yet our true function here was merely to carry out his orders and hide the family disgrace. He couldn't bear for anyone to see him, except his nephews and the staff here at the castle. That's why he was so upset last night, Kitty, when you surprised us in the maze. He, he meant you no harm. He was merely trying to hide. Oh, I see. In spite of everything, he did have certain pleasures. Very often at night, he'd insist on our taking him down to the pond in the maze. He'd take off his cloak and throw himself into the water, his natural habitat. His bed in the tower was a mattress of seaweed, without pillows or sheets or blankets. We buried him in the maze near the pond where he spent the few moments of contentment of his entire life. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have come here. No, Kitty, no. It wasn't your fault. His own rules of secrecy were at fault. He knew that. If he'd allowed his existence to be known, no one would have thought of him as an evil creature. But he was too proud and too weak. So were we all. Well, now you know it all. I'm sorry for the fright I must have caused you all. And most of all, Kitty, I'm sorry for the anguish that I caused you. All I can say is, my own has been almost unbearable. Kitty and Gerald are married now. They live in the old castle very happily. Everything has been changed and modernized, except for one place, the grave of Sir Roger. 